Oh, wow. Will you look at that? We actually have 90 frames per second locked on the city of Vernworth. <laughs> it actually feels very, very smooth. Averages and 1% lows. In today's video, I wanted to go back to Dragon's Dogma 2 and examine the cost of performance ray tracing has, which actually goes beyond just your graphics card, but it also affects your CPU and 1% lows. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, I've been consumed by this game lately, playing it for over 64 hours. So I've actually noticed this myself turning it off and on, even on very high-end hardware. So let's take a look and compare and see what the differences are. Let's go over the settings real quick. We're going to be targeting 4K with DLSS set to quality, and the left side will have ray tracing on, right side ray tracing off. The rest of the settings are maxed out. We're going to begin with the countryside right outside the big city of Vernworth, which we're going to check out next because that is the most interesting part. And here we have ray tracing off has a 23% faster advantage on the 1% lows over the ray tracing on side. And as far as averages, it seems ray tracing on side is only 3 FPS faster, which equals the 3%. That's within margin of error. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it because we are still CPU bound, although we are more CPU bound with ray tracing on as you can clearly see that reflected on the 1% lows. Not a massive difference as far as 1% lows goes, but then again, we are using one of the fastest gaming CPUs, right? On, say, a weaker CPU, the difference could be even bigger. So that's worth keeping in mind, in my opinion. Next, we're going to jump inside the city of Vernworth, where it's actually the most taxing place in the game and any CPU headroom we can gain is a plus. And you can clearly see this here with the ray tracing offside being faster by 32% on the 1% lows and 11% on the averages. Now, that's not great, obviously, 37 FPS with ray tracing off for 1% lows, but it's certainly much better than just 28 FPS. And I've noticed that ray tracing on in the towns can actually cause some, uh, some severe stuttering in some sections sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time. Like this area here, for example, as soon as we enter here, look at that frame time. It drops to the floor. And there are other areas scattered throughout the world that hitch like this. They're not very common, but they are out there. But with ray tracing off, I have not run into those scenarios at all. So that's kind of interesting. But why don't we check out frame generation and toggle that on, see if there is any noticeable difference. And yeah, there is. There's actually a pretty, pretty big difference with frame generation on we have a 51% advantage with ray tracing off on the 1% lows and a 16% advantage on the average FPS with ray tracing off. So that is a very noticeable difference with 65 FPS compared to 43 FPS on ray tracing on. I have created a tutorial video I'll link below with how to install the frame generation mod. You do need an NVIDIA RTX 4000 type GPU, although I've heard there are mods out there that replace the DLSS 3 that's already in the game with FSR 3 that works on other GPUs as well, but I haven't tested this myself. Now, this here is the ideal way of playing this game and how I play it is with a 90 FPS frame rate cap and it stays glued to 90 fps with ray tracing it can be done as well although you do hit some hitches every now and then but with it off as you can see it's perfectly at 90 fps very smooth we'll just fast forward here at three times the speed and look at this even with rain effects and weather effects we're going to make our way inside the market area where there's even more people and you'll see that the game remains locked at 90 fps I've seen a few comments and some people are saying that apparently it's a trick and that it's not actually running at 90 FPS and it's just Riva Tuna statistics showing that it is. I don't think this is true at all because I can I can tell that the game runs at 90 FPS and even when you spin the camera around it's actually very very smooth. 
as a matter of fact, you can look, see where it says hold B to talk, how it's jittering? That's because of frame generation. It'll cause that sometimes. So frame generation is working. And this is at a lock 90 right. FPS. Yeah. But other than that, I don't really see a lot of jitter. Only thing that kind of stands out is if I go beyond 120 hertz above my monitor's refresh rate, that I will see some screen tearing sometimes. But for the most part, the game feels very, very smooth to play. And I also wanted to check out nighttime because actually turning the lantern on in this game actually costs a little bit of performance. Nighttime can actually be a bit more demanding in this game. And as you can see here, even at nighttime running around the city, the game remains locked at 90 FPS with frame generation on. So yeah, this is actually very, that, that's how I've been playing the game, if I'm being honest, is with this 90 FPS lock. But to wrap up this video, the ray tracing in this game actually looks very nice. I personally like it and do tend to keep it on for the most part. But even though it's not really all that demanding on the GPU itself, I've shown it actually running pretty good on a 6800 XT where it trips up is the CPU part of it all. And ray tracing obviously affects the CPU as well as the GPU. And I wanted to sort of highlight the difference between ray tracing off and on on what is pretty much very high-end hardware and you can clearly see the difference so yeah keep that in mind and if you want to have a smoother more consistent experience turn ray tracing off but if you like the video give it a like and subscribe for more content i appreciate you guys watching i hope you all have a great rest of the day thank you